Good morning. Welcome to our worship. It is truly a blessing to gather together to give thanks and praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will begin this morning with our confession and forgiveness. If you would stand and turn and face the cross at the back of the sanctuary. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers, number 244. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we hear the word. The first reading is from the book of Joshua, chapter 24. In this farewell speech, Joshua exhorts the people to serve only the Lord. Joshua erected a stone monument as a witness to the solemn promise the people had made to serve the Lord. Joshua 24, verses 1 through 3 and 14 through 25. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. They presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all of the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived in Israel beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore, revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. 
but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you and having done you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made the statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Please join me in the responsive prayer of Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. That the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children. So that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. The second reading is from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 4. Some of the Christians in Thessalonica were worried that their loved ones who have already passed would be excluded from the resurrection when Christ returns. St. Paul assures them, however, that they are not forgotten and will be among the first to be resurrected. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel, from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning with verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. Hear the word. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No. There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, The other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated, and if there are some children this morning, we invite them to come forward. That's awesome. Come on down. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you. It's a good day. Well, I have some things to teach you this morning. Oh, I'm missing one thing. Oh, I have to get it. Something that we hide away. I'll put it in my pocket. All right. Today's lesson is about a wedding. How many of you have been to a wedding? Yeah, you guys have been to a wedding. No weddings? Oh, I'm sorry. Probably, though, don't you think? You probably just don't remember. Weddings were even bigger in Jesus' time than they are today. And today they're pretty big deals, aren't they? Yeah, lots of fun. In Jesus' day, they might last three or more days. That's a long time, isn't it? To have a wedding party, isn't it? They called them the banquet. Now... This is really strange. Let's go out here. Let's pretend we're at a wedding, okay? And, you know, at our weddings, first we have the bridesmaids come down the aisle, sometimes with the groomsmen, and they walk down the aisle, and we hear pretty music, and everybody lines up here, and the pastor's up here, here and they do a little sermon and there's some music it's really pretty fun isn't it and then the bride the bride comes down the aisle and we all stand up in honor of the bride that's the way we start our weddings but in jesus time like in when this was written It was different. It was the bridegroom. You guys will all be grooms someday, right? Okay, you'll be grooms. And it was when the groom came that the wedding started. 
And you know what? The groom didn't tell them when he was coming. It was kind of like a game. He might come early, he might come late, he might come right in the middle. They didn't know. They didn't know. So the bridesmaids were waiting and waiting and waiting, and they had lamps because it was dark, very dark. They didn't have street lamps. It was dark, dark. And so they had lamps, and their lamps were about this size. And you can see I have some oil in there. It was about this size that they would take off, and they would light them to give them light. They didn't have flashlights. Flashlights would have been easier, right? They didn't have those. This is oil. Yeah, we don't play with this because oil is always a mess, isn't it? Always, just always. But this is the oil that we use for our candles here at St. John's. Did you know that? Yeah, inside this candle, the Christ candle, there is a place where they put the oil. And up in those candles, they put oil. And then the wick is what we light. Because oil and a wick make a flame. Huh, learning something, aren't we? Sometimes it's kind of hard, isn't it, acolytes? Because you have to get it just right. All right, what is this? Candle lighter, isn't it? And what do I have here? Something we never play with, right? All right. Would you hold this for me? All right, and it's always a way... All right, these are getting kind of old, aren't they? There we go. All right, we're going to light it. There we go. Blow it out. Blow it out. Yeah. Got to do it just right, don't we? Come on. Okay, there we go. Now, we're going to light this candle, okay? And I have to go way up here to reach it. Ah, there we go. There's the light. And we say this is the light of Christ in our world today. This is the light of Christ. And if we were at night and we would turn down all the lights, we could still see because this candle would be lit. All right? So we have oil in our lamp, and it'll keep on burning, burning, burning. Yeah, that's like a song we used to sing at camp. And we have our lamps, and we have our light. Now, there's other ways that we can see in this world that we can see Jesus. And I've made you all a little card that you can take. It includes, here's joy. Here's some love for you. I'm going to give you some forgiveness. That's wonderful. How about some happiness? You want a happiness card? That's bringing you happiness. And we have all of these love and peace and comfort and prayer. Yeah, look at them all. Service and caring and joy. Look at them all that we have and we can take them and put them right in our pockets and carry them with us all the time because the light of christ is always in us okay you put it in your pocket i'm putting it yeah there it is let us pray dear god thank you for the light we love you, and we know you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And just think, someday you'll be sitting up here like these acolytes. Won't that be exciting? Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming up. Hold on to your light, your love.
There is a, a quote that's often wrongfully attributed to the theologian Karl Barth. He said something like it, but really not that close. But this goes through the ranks of pastors and preachers. It says that writing a sermon is like holding the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. It may not be a newspaper. It may be television. It may be just looking out into the world. But this is what makes preaching so difficult. It's not the study of the word and preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The difficult part is reflecting on what is going on in our lives, in our country, in the world. On Sundays like this, we reflect back and carry in our hearts last Sunday's horrifying weekend in a church in worship. Men and women and children, faith-filled people, gone. Words cannot even come close to the horror, the pain, the loss. Even though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they will fear no evil. For you, God, and you alone are with them. God is with them. Them. And then on weekends like this, there is the remembrance of our veterans. God bless them. God bless their families. Some of my most significant pastoral moments in my ministry was when a veteran finally trusts me enough to share about their experiences. I am humbled and honored to walk with them as they tell their stories Walking, fighting, living through the valley of the shadow of death. The veterans. And I know on weekends like this, there are many things going on in your life going on in our community. Our prayer list is always filled with those in need. Yet there are always more things that we could pray for. There are things that we may never know and that's okay. But hopefully you know that Pastor Chris and I, along with your brothers and sisters in Christ, are always here for you. You may never know what's going through my mind and my heart. 
but I know that you pray for me as I pray for you. So that is looking at what's going on in our lives, in my life, in your life, in the life of our country. So what do we do? What do we do with our gospel this morning? Our gospel that warns us proclaims to us, shares with us in a very vivid way the coming of Christ in this world. And Jesus tells us this parable in such a way that the people would understand it. A way that was very common to them. The the wedding feast, the lamps, the oil, the light. All things that we too know and understand. That's a parable. A parable can take a very shocking truth and tell it in such a way that we walk away wondering, wondering, how does this affect me? How does this affect my family? How does this affect my church and beyond? So as we went through our children's message this morning, hopefully you were listening, for I find most often people listen closer to the children's message sometime than mine, and that's okay. But I was trying to make this real, for we don't, in our day and age, walk around with an oil lamp at night. Most of our streets are fairly well lit. If not, we use our flashlight on our cells, or we have a real flashlight. We have electricity that we can flip on instantly. So we need to take ourselves back into a time when the world was really dark. And at that point, we combine the feelings that we are having in our hearts, feelings of darkness and sadness, and we bring the light. We bring the light into it, as I did with the little pieces of paper, giving and receiving joy. Love, peace, faith, joy. Those are the things that Jesus brings to us each and every day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the darkness, I will fear no evil, for the light of Christ is always with us. Now, there are some that will say, oh, that was happenstance. That was just a story. 
Of course we have lights around us. We don't need this warning from Christ. For we've got this all figured out. We are too busy to sit down and study this word, thinking, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for my family? For this parable says something so significant, so important. It is a matter of life or death, and life is a total and absolute gift from God. And the reality is, is that death, too, is a gift from God. For God is there when we are born, and God is there when we move into the church triumphant. God the light of the world in Jesus Christ, the energy of the Holy Spirit is in each and every one of us. That is how we get through. That is how we get up on Sunday morning and put our clothes on and we sing those hymns that bring joy and meaning into our lives. That is when we gather for prayer, naming those around us in need of our prayers and God's healing hand. That is the God that shows up for us, that shows up for us in ways of kindness, shows up for us as we study his word, shows up for us as we gather with our friends in Sunday school, confirmation. It is God that shows up 24-7 and promises, promises that he will never, never leave us. being ready. That is, yes, crying those tears, tears of sadness, tears of horror, tears of joy. God is with us. The light shines The light shines as the sun comes up in the morning and sets at the end of day when the moon takes over and lightens us through the night. That is God for us. Now, you will encounter those people that can't see it. Those, again, that just don't get it. But 
Those who think I will put this off until tomorrow. I will buy oil when I get to the store next week. I don't need it now. Jesus is calling us. Jesus is calling all people to turn, to turn our lives around, to accept God in our lives. No matter what you call the higher power in your life, open, open your heart to receive, to receive your God. And the peace of our Lord who passes all understanding, you may be saying to yourself, I don't get this, I just don't get it. Passes all understanding because I can't, I can't draw you a picture vivid enough. I cannot explain everything in great detail. All I say to you Hear the word. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And love your neighbor as much, if not more, then you love yourself. Amen. Let us join together in our hymn of the day. And it's a hymn that been around for a long, long time, and it is based on this lesson, on this parable, and retells that story. And as you sing it today, imagine yourself walking the streets of Jerusalem and hearing this story of the wedding feast and the light. Let us stand together and sing the word.
Now let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. Prayer.
continue our worship with the giving of our time, our talents, and our treasures. Let us pray. Creator God, you made everything, and you provide for every need. The bread we break and the wine we pour come from you. As we eat and drink with thanksgiving, fill us with your love. Let that love flow through us to others and join us to the saints before us in a holy and boundless communion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, 
almighty and merciful God, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the saints and all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we join your, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome at the Lord's table. The feast is ready. Come now. of Christ shed for you. The blood 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 of Christ shed for you.
stand for the blessing and prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God, in this meal, you give us a foretaste of the great feast to come. Keep us faithful to you, that we, with all your saints, may at length celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us join together in our sending hymn, Soon and Very Soon, hymn number 439. Amen. That was good. Let us be seated as we look at our announcements. All of them are written in your bulletin, if you will pay close attention to that. Um, the prayer concerns are listed there. Take them home with you. Visitors, welcome, welcome. And take a gift bag on your way out of the church. And outreach is taking donations for the Catechism Family Fun Night Project. Thanks for the support, and you'll see the table out in the lobby. We are also um, gathering donations of good used children's books, and this is for an outreach by the Church of Damascus Road. So bring those in, and our youth are selling um, Pizza Ranch punch cards. I'm not sure if they're out there today, but they will have them available. I believe we're having hot drinks, um, and we're talking about cocoa and stuff, are available to purchase from our youth. Um, visit them out in the lobby. They're down by the library. And last week, what a hit. I think we sold 90, 90 cups. So it was a big deal. It was very good. 
Um, bowling party is this afternoon at, I believe, 3 o'clock. So meet us at Suite 16. And that is our announcements for today. Let us stand for our benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.